Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today's video. In this one I'm going to be painting another botanical watercolour piece with a mixture of watercolours from tubes and pans and I'll be talking more about that in the rest of the video. I've printed off this reference picture which caught my eye on Pixabay. Last week I did a similar botanical painting in my sketchbook and I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one if you haven't seen it. Today though, instead of using my sketchbook, I thought I'd paint on cotton paper as it holds up better to more water and layers of paint. This is the Fabriano Artistico 100% cotton paper and is hot pressed. So far as choosing which watercolours to use, I concentrated first on picking the right purple colour for the background and some of the shadows on the petals, as mixing purples can be a bit tricky. I opted for Windsor Violet, which is a colour from my Windsor & Newton professional set of 24 half pans. For the bright yellow-orangey colour of the bee, I wanted to use this quinacridone gold. It's also from Windsor & Newton's professional range, but it's in a tube. I also picked Opera Rose and Sepia, as these were colours I wanted to use as well, but aren't included in the 24 set of half pans. So I'll be using both half pans and tube paints in this painting, which I thought would give me the ideal opportunity to see if there are any obvious differences between the two, whilst using them alongside each other. And I'll be sharing my thoughts and talking a bit about the pros and cons of both pans and tubes as I paint. So I hope you enjoy the video and maybe even find it useful. As always, I'll list all the details of the supplies I used today in the description box if you want to go and check them out. So let's get on with it. As you can see, I started out by painting the bee, which you might think is an odd choice if I'm planning on painting a background, as usually you'd paint this first, but I was a bit undecided about how exactly I was going to render this, whether to paint in the whole page or add splatters for a looser feel. And being that my focus at the moment is to continue practicing painting flowers and leaves, I thought I'd concentrate on those first and decide what to do about the background later. I added some washi tape around the edge of my paper just in case. I began by painting the lightest yellow areas on the bee using the wet on wet technique and dropping in some of that quinacridone gold onto the damp paper so it could bleed together with the yellow. Painting the bee was something I felt more confident with so it was a good way to ease into the painting. Painting botanicals on the other hand is something I find more challenging so incorporating the familiar with the less familiar can make the piece feel as a whole less scary or daunting. At least that's how I see it. The Windsor Yellow was a half pan from my tin and the Quinacridone Gold was from the tube. I added in some burnt sienna from the pan to the bumblebee's wing and then left that all to dry while I started work on the flower. For this I used the wet in wet method so pre-wet my paper before dropping in some lemon yellow. I didn't want to be too precise at this stage so let the yellow bleed out onto the wet paper. And whilst it was wet I also added in some of that Quinacridone Gold too. With the yellow areas of the bee dry, I can now paint in the darker ones. I use concentrated sepia here from the tube, adding very little water, and I've switched over to my detail brush, applying paint to dry paper to get in some of those fine hair details. I use my reference photo as a guide to see the length and direction of those hairs. This hot pressed paper dries more quickly than cold pressed, and I'm using less water with my paint, so I was able to layer over darker sections as I went, which helped to add depth to the bee's hairy body. And whilst I'm doing this, and before painting the petals, let's talk a bit about watercolours in pans versus watercolours in tubes. What's the difference, and why would you pick one over the other? Well, so far in this painting, I've used a mixture of both, and for this relatively small piece, there doesn't seem to be much difference in terms of how the paints lay down or mix together. I also didn't see much difference in the vibrancy of the colours between the tubes or pans, but these are professional grade paints, so the difference might be more noticeable in student grade watercolours. Ultimately, a lot of it boils down to personal preference, painting style and budget, so I'm going to give you a few of the pros and cons for each, which might help you to decide if you're thinking of buying new watercolours yourself. So the first thing you might want to consider is usability. The main advantage to tube paints is that they're great for mixing large washes easily. You just squeeze out a dollop of paint and dilute it with as much water as you need and you're good to go. 
This would not be as easy to do however with paints in pans as you first have to activate the paint and then try and get enough of it out of your half or even full pan to cover your large wash. This would be especially difficult if you want a really concentrated wash. So tube paints dissolve more quickly and it's easier to get a high concentration but the small tube size can be fiddly which is a big disadvantage if dexterity is a problem. There's also likely to be more waste as you have to judge how much paint to squeeze out each time. So what about watercolour pans and what about the cost? Well before I talk more about that I'm going to go back to the painting. I've finished with the bee for now and added in a few more details to the centre of the flower. For the petals I'm using a really watery mix of my Windsor Violet with a dash of Opera Rose mixed in. So this is to mark in the beginnings of those shadow areas on the petals. I like to work on alternate petals to keep the paint edges neat and prevent it all bleeding together. Once these petals are dry I can go around the flower again and paint these in too. Then I can start putting in my first layer to the stem and leaves. So let's get back to our discussion. What's the advantage to using watercolours in pans? Well, the most obvious one is that they're much easier to transport, as most pans are available in sets. This is ideal if you want to take them on holiday with you, or if you like painting outside. It's far easier than taking tubes out and about, but that said, you can always squeeze out tube paints onto pans and let them dry to create your own portable paint set. Success with this may vary depending on the brand of your paint and its formulation though so you may have issues with them drying nicely or with some paints drying at all and some manufacturers like Windsor and Newton here advise against you doing this with their tube paints although I have done it before without any problems. I think the reason they say this is because their pans and tubes are formulated differently to each other. Unlike brands like Schmincke Horodan for example whose pans and tubes are formulated the same. Generally, tube paints are designed to be used fresh. I think with Windsor and Newton tube paints, they have added things like fungicides and wetting agents, for example, and these are designed to evaporate once your paint has dried, so it doesn't form part of your paint colour. So I guess there is a chance that your paints might go mouldy if you dry the tube paints into a palette, but it could be a good long time before this does happen. The ready-made pan colours, however, in comparison, are designed to be used from dry, but when reactivated with water, aim to have the same working properties as the tube colour. Personally, I really like the convenience of pans. There's very little preparation needed to set up your palette and you can customise it easily to suit your needs. There's also less mess and filling about required. I've also not had any issues with chalkiness of paint or had any problems reactivating the pans once dry. Also, the pigments I used today seemed equally as vibrant and pigmented in the pans as they were in the tubes, although I didn't do a direct like-for-like -like colour comparison. One thing that could be a disadvantage of pans though is wear and tear on your brushes, especially with certain pigments like cobalt I think. So where you're rubbing your brush away at a compressed pan, it takes its toll on those bristles, especially natural or more delicate brushes but that's why I always try to spritz my pans and soften them with water before I go in with my brush and that really does seem to help. But with all this said there is another factor to consider and that's cost but before I go into that I just want to talk you through my idea for the background of this painting. I allowed the paper to dry completely as I got the main parts of the bee in and mapped out the structure and shadow areas of the leaves and petals. I could just have gone in with more layers to build up some values, contrast and details, but I needed to make a decision. Without any background, the lightest part of the bee's body and the palest petals wouldn't show up on the white paper, and I really wanted to add in some contrast with the winds of violet. I decided not to paint the whole of the background, but instead add a splash of colour around the bee and flower, and have it bleed out onto wet paper to give the painting a looser feel, and using the wet and wet technique. So I applied clean water carefully around the lightest part of the bee's body and the lower petals on the left hand side of the flower. 
Then I dropped in some of that Windsor Violet onto the wet paper and used the very tip of my brush to paint in between the petals. The Windsor Violet is a beautiful vibrant colour and I really enjoyed watching it spread across the surface of the damp paper and just let it do its thing. I wasn't really sure how far out I wanted the paint to spread but kept any harsh edges from forming by running a damp brush up against the edge of the line of paint. Whilst the paper was still damp, I went in with my smaller fine detail brush and added in more concentrated pigment in those darker areas. I then continued this method all around the bee and the flower. I applied the paint carefully around the bee's head to try and keep the fluffy or hairy appearance here that I'd painted in at the start, so I didn't just paint a straight line of colour. I also had to work carefully around the centre parts of the flower here, but the paint will only go where the water is, so it was important to take care at the pre-wetting stage that I only wet where I wanted paint. The same applied for the area around the petals. So I used the tip of my brush to carefully paint in the water before dropping in that Windsor Violet. This definitely helped the petals to stand out and I did like how the winds of violet complemented the yellow stripes on the bee, but looking back I probably should have gone darker and bigger with the background as a whole, but there's always next time. With that all dry it was easy to see that I needed to deepen up the colours on the rest of the painting. For this I went back to my detail brush and used more concentrated pigments working more wet on dry but softening any edges with a clean damp brush. I started with a bee again before adding in more details and colour to the centre of the flower. For the second layer on the petals I also mixed in a bit of French ultramarine blue to certain areas just to make it a bit more interesting. Whilst I'm working on all that, let's talk about the cost of watercolour pans versus tubes because this is a big consideration when buying expensive art supplies and may have a big impact on your final decision as to which to go for. I'll give you a few examples from the paints I'm using today, but there will be variations depending on where you buy from and where you live. Costs will also vary a lot from brand to brand and depend a lot on which pigments are used as some of them are more costly than others. On the whole though, watercolours in tubes are way more economical than pans. If we take the Windsor & Newton professional paint in the shade Windsor Violet, which is dioxazine, this is available open stock on Amazon in either tubes or pans. The 5ml tube costs 6 65 and the half pan costs slightly less at 6 25 this sounds about the same, but if we consider that a typical half pan holds probably less than 2.5 mils, this makes the tubes a much better buy. The same goes for the quinacridone gold. A 5ml tube costs 7 95 whilst the half pan costs 6 99 You could fill a half pan twice with a 5ml tube for just over a pound more. This is a huge difference and as much as I like the convenience of ready-made half pans, once I've used up the supplies I have I will definitely be replacing them with tubes, especially for my schminky Horodan watercolours as the formulas are the same anyway. As far as the Windsor & Newton tubes go, like I said, I've not had any issues with making my own pans from the tube paints, but I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Have you tried it and if so, have you ever had any paints go off or anything like that? Let me know in the comments as I'd be really cross with myself for ruining expensive materials. So there are pros and cons for both tubes and pans and I probably haven't mentioned them all so if there's anything I've left out please also share that in the comments box as well as it might help someone out and I'd love to know as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to this painting for the finishing touches, which I completed with my coloured pencils. I hadn't planned on this at the start, but being that I'd painted on hot pressed paper, 
I thought the pencils would lay over the top fairly smoothly and help me to sharpen up some details. To be honest, overall I would say I found this painting a bit tricky, as I tried to combine more detail on the bee and flower with a looser background and ended up with something in between. I think in my next botanical painting I'll focus more on one section of a flower petal or leaf rather than trying to paint the whole lot and do it more as a study, so maybe that's an idea for another video. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. The bits I did like were the pale petals and the process of painting the variety of shadow colours on them, but I wasn't too happy with the centre of the flower or the leaves. I think I managed to put it together with the addition of the coloured pencil though. In particular, the white coloured pencil was really good for pulling out highlights as well as adding a few fine hairs on the bee's body. But with that, this painting was complete. I think it might grow on me, but let me know what you think of it and if you like it or found today's video helpful or interesting, please consider giving it a thumbs up and comment below what are your favourite paints and are you a pan fan or a tube dude? I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe as well as hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. And believe me, I have got a few crackers lined up, so have a great weekend. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.